right, today we're going to practice painting with just two paints, a dark and a light, or a black and a white, except I have a lot of leftover uh, phthalo blue on my palette, so I'm going to paint with uh, this phthalo blue and white. Uh, so basically, uh, for this project, all you need is um, a um, canvas or panel to paint on, and then a, a dark paint and a white paint. So um, either a black paint or a darker transparent paint, uh, preferably, like um, ultramarine blue or Payne's gray or even the phthalo blue that I'm using. And um, it just needs to be dark enough to make a really, uh, as far as uh, the values, uh, the darkest values and the uh, lightest values of white. So uh, what we're going to do today is uh, just mix some of those values on a palette and then uh, paint something and uh, something pretty simple. So like a ball, I'm going to go ahead and paint this tennis ball or an apple, something just really simple for this project. Um, and we're just gonna do a value study with it. So what I mean by values are the lights and the darks in a painting. And it's really good to practice with just two colors um, or black and white. Um, so you can just really get used to um, values. In fact, sometimes after I paint a painting, I will take it to, and if something just doesn't seem right, sometimes I'll take it to Photoshop and turn the image, I'll take a photo of the painting I did and uh, then turn it to black and white or grayscale values and uh, just, it really helps me see uh, where I can work on my painting, uh, where the values are off basically. So uh, let me go ahead and get set up. So what I'm going to do is I have a disposable palette here. So I'm just going to take my blue and then some white paint and put it on my palette. So I start with my pile of dark blue and my white paint. And then I mixed a middle tone and then one on each side of the middle. So I ended up with five uh, tones all together or values. And uh, with the phthalo blue, it's such a high tinting uh, paint that uh, a dab will do ya. It goes a long way, kind of like grape juice or wine. So uh, if you used maybe Payne's Gray, you might need to use a little more of the the Payne's Gray to make the middle um, and all the different tones. Anyway, let's get started. So I set up my tennis ball, uh, if you happen to see that, and I'm just uh, painting the shadow here. And I'm not going to mix any more paints. I can only, the, the, the point of this exercise is to just use the five values that I created on my palette and not to mix anymore. Now I do a little blending at the end, but uh, you also would, I would suggest, please try not to over blend your painting or you're just going to end up with a muddied work. I do kind of wish I would have blended the shadow a little bit more. It, um, it's a little harsh, but um, besides that, um, I'd rather it be more harsh than um, over blended. So if you're having some, and again, this isn't going to be perfect because um, we're all, we have five shades to work with, and uh, you know a lot of people would mix twice that many, uh, but we're just going to use these five shades. 
In fact, you could even just do the three shades and do the same project. That would even be a better uh, project, maybe. But this is uh, this little tiny hole helps you see two edges, so you can actually kind of narrow down the... Can you see the two edges? If you're having any questions, it just really isolates the two edges, so you can see which one's lighter and which one's darker. Excuse that little bug. I'm in the basement here, so he was under the... He was hiding under that little uh, viewfinder. So I decided to go with the... I think that's the intermediate mid-tone uh, towards the... No, that's the middle tone right there that I did on the... And now I'm doing... Uh, the lighter, the mid light. And then the pure white is where the highlight is. And I think I mix a little of the, the highlight near the top there. So this right here, it must be the middle dark tone, between the middle and the dark. And then this edge, I believe, needed some dark, so I put a little bit of dark on the edge because that's the way it looks on the, on the shadow side. But, uh, and then there's a little reflection down there near the shadow. But I do need to blend this line a little bit to soften it. All right, so here is my finished tennis ball. So I just wanted to read to you, I hope I don't have blue paint on my face, um, from one of my uh, idol artists, and he's dead now, so I don't think he'd have any problem with me quoting him. Uh, he says, drawing, um, this is Hans Hoffman, uh, drawing and painting are two different problems, Hoffman insisted. A drawing that has been merely colored is not a painting. The lines composing the drawing must be considered the smallest of color planes for the drawing to be dissolved and absorbed into a painting. A non-objective work in a 1948 critique won his approval because it was based on color alone without the crutches of lines. Lines, he added, must be integrated through the act of painting, at least through the act of composing. And another thing, um, so uh, I talked in my last video about the planes in a painting. And so he's, uh, I think it's interesting that he would consider the lines and drawing planes in the painting, but that does make sense. Uh, it's not just a coloring book page. Uh, and then another th uh, quote about the planes that I like is, when your planes begin to dance, they are active. So I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, stay tuned for more oil painting uh, videos coming up and some watercolor as well.